what is going on everybody hope all is well uh most of us if you haven't already probably watched that cassie and diddy video um it's a video out there that's circulating regarding the assault on cassie that diddy did it's a very alarming video it's a video where i warn you if you watch it it's very disturbing very alarming for me personally, I'm not surprised. And the only reason why I'm not surprised is that because these are rumors that were going around for years or for a while regarding just how um, Diddy's behavior. And so for me, when I saw it, it wasn't too surprising. But obviously, when you watch something like that, it's still very disturbing. And my heart goes out to her. I have zero, zero respect when it comes to any man putting his hand on a woman. I have zero respect for any form of domestic violence. I don't care which side of the fence that it starts from. There's just no room for it. Um, it's it's just very alarming. And you know, when I watched that video, you know, like most of us, especially those who are men, um, you can't help but think like, imagine if that was my daughter. And I can imagine if you're a woman who maybe have experienced it, uh, domestic violence, that it's a triggering point for you. And so my heart goes out to her. It's very disturbing. It's very alarming. And I don't know if Puff, Diddy, I don't know if he's going to be able to bounce back from this or come back from this. Um, it's, 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 it's alarming. Um, but it had me thinking, because um, I watched the video yesterday, and it had me thinking, and I was just kind of just thinking like how the last several years, really more since the pandemic, that there's a lot of things that's been unraveling. Things that were behind the surface or hidden under the surface starting to rise, right? And I believe persons, it's not by accident. I always pay attention to patterns. And to me, patterns tends to be a source of truth, a sense of revelations, um, in, 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 um, in my personal opinion. And I believe since the pandemic, I believe what the pandemic has done is not only did it cause most of us back in 2020 to get at, get out of our comfort zone, things that we were, our normal day-to-day -day life, things that we have normalized doing, you know, going to work without worrying about wearing a mask, getting sick and getting ill, maybe besides like the normal sicknesses and, and you know, that was out there like allergies and um, what else? The flu, the cold, when those seasons came around. And I'm, I'm speaking more of like airborne stuff. You know, going to happy hour, partying, um, hanging out with family, friends, all these different things. 2020 disrupted that. The pandemic had disrupted that. And I believe a lot of that was not by accident. And we can see, and again, this is just my personal opinion. And, you know, as a disclaimer, obviously, I'm not a prophet. And these are things that, that I suspect and that I have a feeling that god may be doing but again i'm not a prophet so um and i always always say this that if there is anything lord if there's anything that i am saying that does not align with your will that does not align with what you are moving in the spirit and what you are doing please forgive me please correct me give me the correct revelation um but if it's not of you please forgive me please forgive me Give me the, the wisdom, the level of discernment of anything that I am saying on this video. Um, but yeah, but I believe that God is unraveling things and things that we have either idolized, things that we either have um, normalized that were that are toxic, that are damaging, that are very alarming, that are uh, dis destructive, disruptive, um, that are self destruction to ourselves, to our community, to this world, I believe God is unraveling a lot of those things. And it's not by accident where we're just seeing more and more, whether it's our celebrities or just things that's the current climate that's going on in the world, we can see what Israel and Palestine, that's, I mean, it's not nothing new. It's been going on for a while, but we're, we haven't seen a level of tension and the protests that we have never seen before, rightfully so. Um, there are things that are going on in Congo. There are things that's going on in Haiti especially me as somebody who's Haitian, Haitian-American, you know, there's things that's been going on in Haiti for a long time that continues just to show itself. 
there are things that's going on all across the world, even within this country. You know, we still struggle with when it comes to mass shootings. Um, we still struggle with a lot of just a lot of political unrest and issues. This is a huge divide. Racism is still a big thing. And I feel like we're seeing more and more of that stuff unraveling. There's a lot of tension. And I believe it's not by accident. I personally believe that God is kind of having us look in the mirror of things that we normalize, things that we idolize, things that is not of his will. And he's showing that, showing us that there is more to come if we're not careful. There is more to come if we are, if we refuse to align with his will. Again, I'm not a prophet, so I'm, you know, um, but this is what I suspect. And again, if I'm wrong, God forgive me if I'm wrong in any, in any kind of way. There are some good things that are going on in this world. There are people who are putting themselves out there as far as um, being a good, what's the word I'm looking for? A good human being to, to one another and to their community. There are a lot of humanitarian um, organizations that are out there that is really trying to make a difference in this, in this world, and it's, it's, which is amazing. I believe it gets overshadowed, unfortunately, by a lot of the wicked and evil and toxic things that it goes on in this world. And we know that Satan is a god of this world, as the Bible says. And that's why we have to be careful because he is doing the job that he does as a god of this world is causing a lot of deception, a lot of things that we idolize that we should not idolize. There was a video I saw recently, it was a news video where this satanic satanist group now wants to have um a foot in into schools and what i mean by that is like they want to because you know there's this whole thing between separation between church and the school and church and, and state and um but now you know they want a foot in it they believe like hey well if christians could say something within when it comes to schools we should be able to too that's very alarming. There's just a lot that is just going on. And even when we look at, to kind of go back to Diddy and Cassie and just that as a whole, um, I guess what's alarming to me that is that if people knew this was going on, especially within the industry, why was a blind eye um, was turned? Why nothing was being said? Why did it take Cassie to really go out there herself and say, hey, you know, he's been abusing me. And for like now there's an outrage. And even when she first came out, and of course, anybody can make any type of accusation and there needs to be some form of evidence. But people must have known this. Um, so it's just alarming. But I feel like we normalize so many things because we rather idolize the lifestyle versus the morals uh, we idolize lifestyle versus our our morals and our morals is very bankrupt is very corrupt um i believe personally that um and again this is what i feel like with 2020 and beyond is continuing to show us like yo we are self-destruction ourselves because we have normalized um, and celebrate toxic, damaging behavior. Um, we could look at hip hop, hip hop as an example. I love hip hop. I'm a hip hop head. I grew up in hip hop. I, you know, LL Cool J was the first hip hop artist I was a huge fan of. LL Cool J and, and Run DMC. So I grew up from that era. And then, you know, the, it just kind of just goes on. But we could just look the direction that hip hop has gone. And I feel like it's been going this direction for a while, even before the pandemic. But we can see how much more damaging toxic it has become. And I, I don't want to say as a whole, because there are a lot of great artists that just doesn't get the limelight. Again, there are artists that are out there that who make great music, who make great uplifting music. There's a lot of great Christian rap artists, but they get pushed to the side. And what overshadows it is the toxic, damaging, and very alarming music that is out there kind of like the comparison like i was saying like there are a lot of people are out there a lot of organizations that are doing some great things in this world but they get overshadowed by the wicked wickedness and the evil of this world which again i personally believe it's not by accident we can blame the media we can blame
blame social media. We could blame the news outlet. We could blame whatever, but it's happening. It, it, it really, really is happening. And we celebrate it and act like this is just normal. Um, we could look at some of our favorite artists um, or people that we see that's popular now, that's up there. We can see the current climate of like drill music, which to me, I feel like is very demonic. I feel like the state of hip hop right now is very demonic, at least what's, what's being pushed out there to the masses. But we normalize like it's just it's just entertainment, but it's not surprising it or it has not been surprising to me seeing that some of these drill artists are has lost their lives and are being and they're dying off of what gun violence, the very thing that they're promoting, the very thing that they're speaking of, and these labels are not doing anything about it. They want them to promote this type of music, but they're not doing anything to help protect these kids. And of course, a lot of these kids come from the inner city, come from the hood, and they have very alarming, troubling um childhoods but we need to do something to protect these kids because there are young men who look up to these drill artists and it's alarming there was a video it might have been early this year maybe late last year that i saw and it was just a little boy he might have been maybe seven eight years old nine years old and he 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 did a rap video with a bunch of guys around him and it was in the hood and it was just drill music and flash of money and talking about his ops and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, yo, what is, that's just a prime example. And so of course, of course it caught a lot of backlash, but I was surprised a video like that came out because again, this is what we think. And we're thinking like, well, this is the culture and this is what we should promote. Um, he's getting money. And I remember the person, I don't know if it was his father. I don't know if it was uh, his brother. I don't know what the relation, relation, relationship is. But one of the guys who's in the video, he went and, and he defended it. He was like, you know, you know, people are haters and they're hating, you know, you know, you know, he's trying to do something, you know, to try to make money and, and, you know, to do something to get ourselves out the hood or whatever. And it's almost like we have to do toxic and damaging things and use that as an excuse to kind of get ourselves out of the situation that we're in um, or the environment that we're in. And we justify, like I said, we justify bad behavior. We justify toxic behavior. We celebrate bad behavior as long as, as long as it's considered as either entertainment or as long it's considered as us getting a bag, getting money. We idolize lifestyle versus our morals. We idolize lifestyle at, you know what I'm saying, at the dispense of damaging our morals. And there's always consequences that's going to come along with it. Just like a video that I did called Sin is Expensive. Um, like I stated, you can choose your sin, but you can't choose your consequences. And we look at Cassie and Diddy, you can look at that situation. It's like now those that video surfaced or took place back in 2016, it now has been put to light. Who knows what else that's out there that he has done? Because I'm sure that wasn't the first time. But eventually that comes to light. It, 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 it comes to the surface. And now the consequences for that terrible act is now he's going to have to deal with. You get what I'm saying? And it's just damaging. Even when it comes to the women in hip hop, you have artists like Rhapsody, who I feel like is one of the illest. I don't even say just a female rapper, just rapper, period. She is amazing but she doesn't really get put out there what gets put out there are the sexy regs and the cardi b's and the ice spice and the lottos and so forth and i know people are going to say like oh but they're making money it's entertainment you know stuff like that the mega stallions and so forth but again we celebrate toxic toxicity in our culture and when we look at it, yes, it could be, again, be deemed as entertainment. But we also have to look at that there are young girls who look up to these artists. And the rebuttal is going to be, well, parent, they shouldn't be their role models. It should be their parents. Rightfully so. 100%. But also, let's face reality. The reality is that you have some parents who are not home because they're working two or three jobs. You have some parents that should not be parents. Um, 
you have kids who are going to look up to inspire to be just like them. We see it all the time. Like, you, you get what I'm saying? We see it all the time. And it's very unfortunate. And though it can be looked as entertainment, but we celebrate women now who all they want to do is twerk and booty shake and reveal as much as they can um, as far as with their body. And, and it's looked as women empowerment. And I don't believe, I don't see anything that's empowering about that. It's, it's deception. I really believe it's deception. And I, again, I believe that we're seeing just this rise and it's, it's, you, you could just see the current direction and climb that we're going in. And until we get a grasp and start, like, start taking control of our, our culture or it's not even just our culture, but just as a whole, the way that we're living, the way we're acting, the way we're behaving, what we're promoting, what we're allowing to be promoted, um, we're going to continue to go down this dark, dark path. And it's it's just alarming. And there was this, this uh, statistic that I saw, and I'm going to see if I could find it and, and post it, but it was a, a statistic that came out recently. And it was regarding the, it was the average medium income by ethnicity. And us as black people, we're all the way at the bottom. We were at the bottom of that list, which wasn't surprising, but it's, it's a, a, a revelation in my opinion of where we stand and where we're at and why we are focusing on the wrong things as a culture. And we were at fifty one thousand as the average median income, somewhere around fifty one or fifty two thousand, all the way at the bottom, at the top of the list, because there were two different ones. The top of the list was Jewish Americans. I think they were at one hundred and eighty eight thousand, and then I think the other one, because this was based in America, and I think the second one might have been Indian Americans. I think I have to double check, but we're all the way at the bottom. And I remember what seeing this statistic wasn't surprising. But it's telling. And I looked at the comment section because I saw this on Instagram. And there was a, uh, a, a, a lady who made a great point. And I'm just paraphrasing what she wrote as in her comments. But she basically put, um, actually, let me see if I can find it. Because I actually want to quote exactly what she said. Just give me a second here. Because um, I had saved it. Oh, here it is right here. Um, so she put, mind you, this is based on household income. That's what is household income, not individual income. Too many of us are brainwashed not to get married and love each other that we will never climb this list. And I, and I saw that I was just like, yo, that's, it's, how can you argue that? Cause it is average household income, not individual income. Individual income might even be worse to be quite honest with you, but where we're at. And you can see again what we promote, and within social media, especially, you see there's just these there's these different podcasts and or um, blogs where there's this constant conversation between black women and black men to just divide. And you're seeing even more and more again, especially if you see a celebrity getting divorced. It's not saying only celebrities get divorced, but you see where it's like, well, you know, that's why I don't believe in marriage anymore. You know, it's just a contract and you know, YOLO, I'm just going to live my life, you know, all this stuff. And Grant, you're, you have you have free will. You're able to live the life that you need to live. But we don't see the bigger picture. Um, I, I'm not part of the Jewish community. I'm not part of the Indian American community or any other community except the black community. So I'm going to speak just for our community. And But I, I wouldn't be surprised if those other communities are not having those same type of issues. And if they are, they're not promoting it. They're doing whatever they can to fix it. Again, this is, I'm not part of those communities. This is what I'm assuming because it seems like there's a little bit more unity. We talk about all the time like there's a lack of unity. There's lack of unity in our community. There's also lack of accountability in our community. And there's power in wealth, obviously, but there's power in marriage. There's power in a couple growing and building wealth together. You know, you can look at any statistic and data and you'll see that. Um, the Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Uh, I believe that's Proverbs 18, verse 22. 
and it's true. I can speak for myself that as somebody who is married, I I can tell you that I've seen so much blessings that has come in favor from the Lord because of my marriage. And my wife too as well. You know, there's a blessing that is in it. And I guess my point is that when we 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 don't see the bigger picture. We live for the moment, we live for right now, and we don't really see the long-term goal. We don't see that the decisions that we make and how the impact it's going to have, not only for us, but for the next generation. And I feel like this kind of just ties everything as a whole. And again, that's why I said, I feel like there's a much bigger picture and there are things that are just unraveling. And I feel like there's more things are going to unravel and not just w- within celebrities, um, quote unquote, I think just in general, because domestic violence is not a celebrity thing that's been going on for, you know, Joe Schmo down the block. It doesn't really matter. Um, it, it, it has nothing to do with it, but it's what we idolize and, and, and what we celebrate. We celebrate toxic behavior and that overshadows the goodness that is going on. And those are the things I fight needs to get promoted more. Those are the things you talked about more. Those are the things that that this generation needs to see so they can see like, yo, I can be more than just um, the dope boy in the corner. I can just be more than just the next, you know, mega stallion. I'm not trying to throw shots at any of these artists. What I am saying is that um, we have to start looking much more deep within ourselves and seeing like the way we live in, the way that we are living, does it align with God, the will of God? But not only that, am I doing things that I'm going to have to pay for in the long run that I'm not going to be able to afford to pay for? And I don't want to pay for it because when it, when Satan's ready to pay up, what he wants you to pay, you got to have to pay up. And that's the part that you got to be careful of. And so this is not one of those videos like saying everybody needs to repent, needs to repent, needs to repent. If you do, you know, definitely you should. But this is just a video that I just want to create. This is just my thoughts. That's really all it is. Just getting my personal opinion on the way things are and the way I feel like where things are going. And there's so much more. Like a video like this could be a two or three hour video. And that's that's not what it's going to be because there's so much more that I can talk, we could talk about. You know, obviously, even when it comes to the average medium income by ethnicity in the United States, we know that as black people, we've been 10 steps behind because of slavery and Jim Crow. And um, we saw the destruction of or there was a destruction of Black Wall Street, segregation. There's so much that has redlining that really has um, pushed us back. And those things are justified to where, and that's also probably telling with those numbers. And I'm speaking regarding that statistic, but I'm speaking of things that's also self-inflicted within us that we need to look at, right? Um, that we need to, to start realizing like, hey, you know what? Um, what can we do within ourselves as a community to kind of change the dynamic? Because racism is never going to change. Racism is not going anywhere. And it's, a, it's going to be a continuing fight that we're going to have to fight, but we don't have to self-destruct ourselves, self-destruct the black dollar, self-destruct um, our community just because. And it's really more than just flash money and big jewelry and, you know, being half naked and twerking or flashing guns on the screen and things like that. Because we see the celebrities that we idolize. We see the path and the, and, and the direction that they're going. And we see that, that self-destruction. We see Diddy. Um, you can see Young Thug, who's on trial for a RICO charge, and, and a lot of his um, counterparts are fighting criminal charges as well. We see the loss of Pop Smoke, um, King Von. We see what happened with the whole Tory Lanez and Mega Stallion situation. It was a very messy, um, troubling situation. We see how, you know, Lizzo, you know, every now and then she has a mental breakdown on social media because of the pressure of social media and then she has her own allegations that she's fighting. Um, we see so many different things that goes on with people that some of us idolize and look at it because we're so caught up into the lifestyle and thinking like they're living this luxury lifestyle, this beautiful lifestyle, and not understanding that they may be, again, outside looking in. I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not with them. But from the outside looking in, that there's something 
troubling that they're dealing with and that the industry that they may be part of, it's more than just what we see on social media. Social media shows the highlights, but it's not really show what they probably really battling and struggling with, especially when it comes to their mental health. And that's why I keep saying, like, we can't idolize lifestyles. We have to start looking at um, the morals and the way that we are living. Entertainment is entertainment. And it should be taken as such, but it should not also be at the expense where it's damaging um, the person who's creating the entertainment and also those who are watching it and may be influenced by it. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, until the next video, one love. It